not punching Joe Buck in the face. This is Corey from Sticky Bleachers. I'm Bob. We got Troy Aikman in a headlock, though, and excited for this Dallas Cowboys-Green Bay Packers matchup here in wonderful Dallas, Texas, Corey. There you go. And Troy always gets up for these games, but uh, Joe Buck is his usual lucky bastard uh, demure self, let's say. He's hanging out by that fireplace that they were at last night, so enjoying (laughs) the wonderful, cozy hotel room. These days, Bob, Joe Buck is uh, sporting the Brett Favre beard, the um, lots of gray and the stubble. Yep. Got to move into that uh, new phase of his career. There you go. So the question here, Bob, is um, which of these high-powered offenses is going to get the job done? Eddie Lacy getting things started pretty well for Green Bay into Cowboys territory, but we will see once the Cowboys take over what their own uh, young offense can do. Absolutely, and I think another thing is how will Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott respond to the playoff pressure? Obviously, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers are pretty well battle-tested here, and Randall Cobb with a touchdown, so they got their work to do here in Big D. And I think you're right, Bob. This is going to be a question of veterans versus uh, the young, fresh talent because Aaron Rodgers and Randall Cobb, both longtime veterans, the Green Bay team stacked with a lot of uh, of longtime players, a lot of youth and energy on this Dallas team, especially on the offense. So you're right, Bob. It will be the question of how they can st- stack up to the pressure. We should uh, learn a lot after this first drive here by Dallas. So let's see how they come out of the gates. Yes. Oh, now, maybe uh, maybe surprise. Alfred Morris. Uh, oh, surprise, Tony Romo making an appearance, Bob. Well, that might be uh, some of the decision making that Jason Garrett went to. So, uh, the Packers plan for Dak Prescott this entire time, and they throw Romo out there to start the game. So, interesting. And Alfred Morris, another uh, veteran. So, uh, interesting Cowboys going away from the young, exciting talent and going for two of their uh, old reliables. Yeah, uh, very interesting play call. Let's see how this actually works out for the Cowboys. And you see Tony Romo throws that interception, so instantly Jason Garrett throws down his Microsoft Surface tablet. (laughs) Yes, the Microsoft, do not call it an iPad, Surface. Yes. (laughs) Eddie Lacy with a nice zigzag run there for about eight yards, and it'll be second down and two here for uh, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers with excellent field position, Corey. All right, there we go. You're right, Bob. So here's Eddie Lacy. He's got another nice run. So he's uh, he's going to be piling up the yards here in the first half, and Green Bay fans have to be happy about that, coming on the road and establishing a strong ground game. Yeah, and of course, these Packer fans, they always travel really well. So even though we are in Big D, there's plenty of uh, gold and green out there. Right you are, Bob. And I think Jared Cook on that last touchdown pass from Rodgers was maybe his sixth uh, check down. You saw he had all day to throw in the pocket. He went, uh, let's see, Randall Cobb? Nope. Uh, bring it over here. Nope. Who else is open? Nope. All right, we'll go to Jared Cook. It's nice to see uh, the European surgery technology uh, helping Jordy Nelson get his ribs uh, in place here for this game. So well, kudos you know. to the doctors over there. Yes, uh, and I'm reported we did not make a woman out of his ribs. They did replace all of them. Yes. We haven't mastered that technology yet. (laughs) Tony Romo with the check down, incomplete pass. So the Cowboys stumbling out of the gates here offensively. And you can kind of already hear it from the crowd here, Corey. They want Prescott and Elliott out there. Yes, well, and, you know, Tony Romo certainly has his, uh, as he way overthrows a wide open receiver, certainly has uh, playoff experience, but it hasn't all been uh, positive playoff experience, Bob. Exactly. Sometimes uh, the experience can work against you, and there are the demons coming back to haunt Tony Romo again. Romo and Kaha Quentin Dix the- <laughs> looks like he's going to take it all the way back, all the way down oh, to the five or six no. yard line here, Corey. Oh, Green Bay looking to go up by three touchdowns here as we start the second quarter. Just just fun to watch Tony Romo crumble in the playoffs. I'm just having a great time. It's a, it's a common story here in Dallas, and uh, you can, <laughs> I think I start to smell a riot here actually going on. You can kind of smell uh, those in the air. Yeah, well, Jerry Jones is starting to throw some punches in his luxury box. This was actually, I'm getting word, it was actually Jerry Jones' decision to start Romo and Morris here for the game, so. Uh, yes. He is, the uh, Mr. Burns of the NFL, Jerry Jones. Exactly. Lacking his Smithers, but uh, still Mr. Burns nonetheless. Uh, Jason Garrett is his Smithers. Bob. Is that his Smithers? Okay, that uh, actually he's, makes sense. That makes he's sense. Been, he's been groomed as the uh, yes-man lackey for about three decades now That's since true. he was the quarterback uh, all those years ago. Backup quarterback to uh, Troy Aikman. Exactly. And uh, Alfred Morris there with a nice run. And finally, we get Elliott in the game here with a nice pitch, and he zigzags for a first down and then some. So Whoa. there's that youth coming. And oh, he puts the ball on the ground, though, and it's oh. recovered by the Packers. <laughs> ha ha, Clinton Dix. No laughing matter. 
He picks up the fumble and runs it for a short gain there. And he was doing the uh, the Peterson tango backwards, Bob. He, he was, was uh, he, rather than just going down. He lost about five return yards there of his uh, fumble return. But just like that, two possessions in a row end in uh, haha Clinton Dix running the other way. Absolutely, and every uh, possession here. Oh, and this isn't good for the Packers. Eddie Lacy oh, is... looks like he's injured. That doesn't look good, Corey. Looks Big like trouble. it might be something serious. And they're going to have to go see. to the uh, the substitution board here. And uh, yep. old reliable James Starks comes in. Yep, so that's going to be well, it's going to be the story of the second half. Maybe we'll have to get a report on him. Uh, and James Starks, already you can see the difference uh, looking like he has the cement shoes on today. James Starks took over the Donald Driver role for uh, the Packers as the guy that seems like he's been in the league forever. <laughs> that's right. Well, then, here we go. He gets the first down on this one. So maybe he just needed to get up into uh, second gear, Bob. Well, absolutely. Uh, Jason Starks, or James Starks, known for his uh, third and fourth gear. Yeah, now, Bob, don't worry about flubbing on the name because I'm, I'm sure that I'm going to call him Bubba Sparks at some point in this game. <laughs> as well you should. And there's Jared Cook with his second <laughs> touchdown. It's fair to say that he is cooking now, Corey. Yeah, right, right. There we go. Uh, now, a name we uh, sadly won't hear this year is is Coon for the Packers. No, he has moved on to uh, another team. I don't know what yes. team it is, but he moved yes. on. For, but for a long time, that was their uh, their reliable uh, fullback, third down, short yardage position. And their uh, audience participation player of the game. <laughs> right, right you are, Bob. And there's Terrence and... Williams wide open. So Romo with his uh, one of his few completed passes to an actual Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, so let's see if they can uh, do something here before halftime. One twenty-six left to go, and if you can hear the smile in my voice, it's just because I love to see uh, Romo in action in the playoffs. So here's Ezekiel Elliott, and you have to think that uh, Jason Garrett's going to be like, all right, we want him to have the ball in every play. Get that thing out of Romo's hands. We're Still not willing to put in um, Dak, which is curious. Yeah, we're going to have to get uh, our sideline commentator, uh, Mean Gene Okerlund, to see if there is something wrong with Prescott, but there's a nice catch by uh, Des Bryant there for a first down. And the Cowboys are uh, moving the ball down the field. At least they're in field goal range here, Corey. There you are, Bob. And Mean Gene rocking the great uh, purple polka dot bow tie. Ah, in honor of Craig Sager. One of the few people who can actually pull off the bow tie. Uh, others include Bill Nye, the science guy. Yes. And Ezekiel Elliott with the pitch there. And he gets the first down. 20 seconds left. They're going to be forced to call their... Oh, they have no timeouts left, actually. So they're going to bring up the field goal unit here, Corey, with 14 yes. seconds left. And a very poorly managed drive there. They finally get some momentum, but uh, play calling. I understand keeping it on the ball in the hot hand of Ezekiel Elliott, but you have to wonder if you try to get him a screen to the sideline to save a timeout or two. Absolutely, or at least take a shot to the back of the end zone there to have a all-or-nothing play there. But as it stands, we go into halftime 28-3, Green Bay leading the pa or Green Bay leading the Cowboys. So dominating first half for Green Bay. Yeah, there you go. And Eddie Lacy, uh, interesting, only 56 yards. I thought that it looked like a lot more for Eddie Lacy before he went out with the injury. So we'll have to see how they do in the second half. And the Cowboys, they're just going to have to be slinging it. We'll see if Romo comes out for that second half. There we go. Stay classy, uh, Tecmo, right there on that shot. Absolutely. Uh, while we're here at halftime for the playoffs, let me shout out to Tech Monster, programmer of this patch. You can find this patch and many others by many other talented Tecmo Super Bowl hackers over at TecmoBowl.org. You can also find out more about the Tecmo Super Bowl competitive scene at TecmoBowlers.com. Let's get the second half going. Absolutely, and Alfred Morris there, Alfred Morris there with the uh, handoff, and he gets a, a few yards there. So Cowboys with the ball to start the game, or the second half, I'm sorry. And uh, they do come back out with Romo, but you have to think that they wanted to put a touchdown on the board in that last drive. So you could get back in the game with a touchdown just before halftime and the ball to start the second half. It's just, uh, it's unfortunate because he had all the time in the world there, the wonderful offensive line given Tony Romo all the time in the world to throw that ball, and he checks down to Alfred Morris for the first down, but they got to take shots down the field court if they're going to win this game. Right, uh, and the Green Bay defensive front knows that and to take advantage of it for the big sack for a nine-yard loss. So now that they're in uh, desperation mode, that kind of takes a lot of things off the table for them. So Green Bay can kind of uh, pin their ears back and dive after Romo. Those are some great cliches that you threw out there, Corey. Absolutely. I try. I try. You know what? I try. You know, I'm learning from the great ones uh, down below us in the booth below uh, here at uh, Cowboy Stadium. 
We Joe can uh, and Troy Aikman. We can throw that uh, bend don't break defense out there. Oh yes, yes. And now those are things I usually hear from the um, the fourth and fifth tier ESPN college football commentators. That's true. Also, uh, people I try to model my own uh, broadcasting career from, Bob. I try to model my life after uh, ESPN five. Yes, nice. Well, there we go. Late so night. you want to? Yeah, someday I want to be uh, covering the Miami of Ohio game every week. On, or the on the drone action. racing league. Yeah. Yes. Now, actually, those are more exciting. You those really those are. Yeah, they've up. actually made their way to ESPN three, so that's they're moving up in the world. Right. And here, speaking the, of uh, veterans, Bob, there's Jordy Nelson pulling in a long touchdown pass. So Green Bay not losing any speed here as they come out for the second half. Nope. Jordy Nelson actually looks like he hit uh, one of those r- repaired ribs there, but uh, of course, a touchdown cures all injuries. So he is running <laughs> around. We we know that very well. Um, we're still waiting on word from me, Gene, about what happened to uh, Eddie Lacy. He is standing in the pretzel line. He's actually, it's a long line for pretzels here in Dallas. And uh, me and Gene noted pretzel connoisseur, so. Uh, well, there we go. Also, I understand that. he makes good pizzas, Bob. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Anything. Available uh, available at a dive bar near you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With, ironically, a pretzel crust on the pizza. Now, that's actually a really nice idea, Bob. Does that exist in real life? I'm sure Pizza Hut's already taken care of that. Okay. All right. Yes. Well, they put a they lot. They probably of put in cheese crust. in it as well. So that's actually I, I really like that idea. Pretzel crust. I, I like a, a good pretzel crust um, pastrami sandwich from the local deli, but uh, I've known of a pretzel crust pizza. Wow. There's the latest State Farm insurance salesman, uh, Jake Ryan, with the sack there. Every right packer, every packer gets the uh, State Farm commercial now. So. Yeah, well, got to run through that rotation. Uh, State Farm looking to up their sales in the greater upper Midwest area. Absolutely. Nationwide, Corey. Not to be confused with Nationwide Insurance, which uh, Peyton Manning has the lockdown on. Hey, there's Des Bryant with a touchdown in the back of the end zone. And we kind of have a football game here, Corey. There you go. And it's, like, we almost forgot that Des Bryant was uh, playing today. Man, oh, man, oh, man. Walmart parking lot. Uh, ultimate fighter Des Bryant with the, uh, the <laughs> touchdown there. The point oh, after the is foibles good. that we get into in the NFL. I uh, still haven't seen that video. Come yeah, on, TMZ, well, you know, do your job. No, yeah, knowing the NFL, uh, it'll be very long time before we do get that video, and TMZ may have to be our uh, saviors there. Uh, and Green Bay gives it up. Green Bay gives it up, and Dallas gets it. So at the end of the third quarter here, we have 35-10. Packers still leading the Cowboys here, but the Cowboys looking to get back in this thing somehow, some way. Wow, and Romo just barely gets that one off to Witten. It looked like the uh, the whole, what, let's see if I can get another cliche, Green Bay bringing the house on that one. Oh, a very good cliche there, Corey. Tony Romo back to pass here. All day to throw, and he gets the touchdown. So Cowboys making, uh, making some noise here. Alfred Morris with the touchdown. 16-35 with the point after attempt coming. Wow, we Bob. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yep, so Dan Bailey here with the point after, and that is good. So 17-35, Corey. Do we have ourselves a football game? I think we do, Bob. Bailey kicking it off. Uh, they're going to have to stop him here and quick strike, quick strike, quick strike, though. They could use one of those, uh, another fumble there and some type of turnover here, but I think the Packers are going to keep the ball on the ground try to eat up as much clock as they possibly can. Yep, but uh, just as you say that, Rodgers goes back and he takes a wicked hit there. So um, maybe they should have taken advice from you, Bob. Yeah, Tyrone Crawford there with the sack. So second down and 12 here for the Packers. The pitch to James Starks. And he's got a little room on the edge there, but he gets that lost yardage and then some. So third down and six coming, Corey. And here's Aaron Rodgers back to pass all day long to throw. Bodies flying everywhere. Randall Cobb wide open, but oh, Aaron Rodgers no. overthrows him, Corey. So they'll be forced to punt just what the Cowboys needed. Oh, too bad. Uh, yeah, that could he could still be running, Bob, if Aaron Rodgers had been on target. I understand he had pressure in his face, but uh, I think he wants that one back. Yep, absolutely. But still up 35-17, a nice punt there by Shum, and uh, the Cowboys have some work to do. Got to make it down the field. Yep, uh, that, you're right, and that punt could be a, a big play in this game, pinning them back, leaving them a long field, and they do have to go to the ground because Romo's been less than perfect uh, through the air today, although the turnover bug has not bitten them quite so bad here in the second half. No, and he's definitely uh, hit some hit his uh, notable wide receivers here, uh, Bryant and Witten here, and Terrence Williams gets in on the action. Nice move there to break a tackle at the 50. He gets down to the 30. He gets down to about the 27, 26-yard line, Corey. 
So yes. uh, nice catch and run there, but a minute 55 left to go. They have some serious, serious work to do. And they are forced to call a timeout there. Terrence Williams unable to get out of bounds. It looked like he could have cut that one and stayed outside to get to the sideline, but he cut it back in for a few extra yards. Uh, that did cost them the timeout. And uh, off the hands of Jason Witten, their old reliable, not so reliable right there. But Alfred Morris with a little check down, running with sand in his shoes to get down to the 10-yard line. There we go, but they will call their final timeout here on first down, and uh, looks like, well, they can get a first down inside the one, but we'll just call it first and goal. First and goal-ish. Yeah, there we, go. there we go. Second down and seven here to go. Tony Romo, they got to take a shot in the back of the end zone, uh, but they toss it to Alfred Morris. They had Des Bryant wide open, although Morris does get in there for the touchdown. So Yeah, and it looks like he he dances his defender back to the uh, the end line. But uh, it's going to be 24-35 after the extra point. So let's see, uh, Bob, what they go for here. Will they go for the onside or will they kick it deep? Well, I would imagine the onside kick has to be coming here. Okay. But I am no offensive coordinator or head coach. so. And not executed very well. Uh, Bubba Sparks does make that. There we go, there I, we as go. promised. Bubba James Sparks. <laughs> there we go. Uh, how many X's are in, in Sparks? Is I, it two I, or is it three? I think it's three to be ironic. Oh, three to be ironic. Well, nobody does irony like Bubba Sparks. And here's no. James Starks uh, with the first down run. Packers looking to just run this clock out, and uh, looks like that's what they'll do. Yep, so looks like the Packers are going to come to Big D and uh, send the uh, the Cowboys home. So short drive here for the Cowboys to go home, but nonetheless. So Packers, Bob, you could say come to Big D and leave with a big W. Exactly. Exactly. There we go. And then, uh, oh, just a little insult <laughs> to injury there. Jordy Nelson has to get two touchdowns in every Packers uh, playoff win. So There you go. And little... you know what they say, Bob? It's only poor sportsmanship if you don't execute. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. So it's it's okay to do that, It's but it's only poor sportsmanship if you drop that pass. As long yeah. as you make it, you got to go for it. What You know? It's like that's shooting the three ball when you're up by 20 in, in the NBA game. This is a man's league, Corey, so it's it's understandable. Yep. They're not going to take their foot off the, the neck of the Cowboys there. There you go. So Packers take the win, almost doubling up the Cowboys. Uh, the big question will be next week uh, how they can do without Eddie Lacy if he doesn't come back. Still waiting on uh, word on how he is and if he's enjoying his pretzel, Bob. Yeah, Mean Gene still in the pretzel line, so... Uh, I don't know if we're going to have to dock and pay or anything. I don't even know if we can. So I think he's like tenured as our sideline official. But uh, All right. <laughs> anyway, Tony Romo, 219 yards passing, but those two interceptions the first half really hurt the Cowboys. And uh, Aaron Rodgers being Aaron Rodgers, throwing for 180 yards. I don't know how many touchdowns he had, probably four or five. And uh, yep. Jordan Nelson with 85 yards reception and uh, James Starks there. Coming in late, but taking over as the leading rusher for the Packers. So there you go. And win. the big the big number is going to be, I think, the turnovers, Bob. That led to uh, the Packers taking the three touchdown lead there in the first half, and uh, it was really uh, going to be tough for the Cowboys to catch up from there. The two uh, interceptions from Romo, we had a fumble recovery. The Packers did give up the one on the kickoff return, but uh, did not end up in anything too damaging for them. Yep, and Jerry Jones is going to have some explaining to do about why Dak was not in the game and why Tony Romo was there. So we'll see if this might be Tony. Romo's last game as a Dallas Cowboy, Corey. Yes, well, we'll have to see if he comes back on our Tecmo Super Bowl simulation patch next year. If you uh, like this video, feel free to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and leave us a comment. You can find all kinds of cool content here on the Sticky Bleachers channel, including our alternate playoff timeline universe. Universe. The one universe. I prefer. The one Bob prefers in which we simulate the playoffs as if our 17-week regular season simulation happened. It's always very weird to describe that one, but um, we do have those up without commentary. So if you want to check those out, you may. Feel free to let us know what you think on that. Get in touch with us on Twitter and Facebook where we are Sticky Bleachers in both places. And, of course, stay tuned this week, next week, and every week for more exciting action. Signing off for now, I will be Corey. I'm Bob. We'll see you next time.